Hi, my name is Paul Grogan and welcome to the latest gaming rules video log. As you will notice, I am sat outside. It's a lovely Saturday in May uh, and I've decided to film this video log outside. So I'm not sure if the lighting or the audio is going to work. There's certainly a lot of birds singing around me. So yeah, apologies if the quality of this uh, is a little different from the others, but I thought I'd sit outside and uh, yeah, do it a little different. Um, also, my iPad is probably going to overheat at some point. So yeah, this is going to be a little bit of an experiment. I have filmed video logs outside before, but yeah, I spent an hour trying to set everything up this morning. I'm not sure if this is going to work or not. But anyway, hello, welcome. Thank you very much for, uh, for watching this. Uh, this is, as I mentioned at the start, this is my monthly video log, although last month's was quite late. So actually this one, although I'm filming this around the start of May, uh, this is only going to cover the last three weeks worth of stuff. So it's not going to be as big as the last one, which actually covered six weeks worth of stuff. Um, but we've got a whole host of things uh, in store for you. Basically, I'm going to go through all of the games that I've played, all of the content that I've been creating, what I've been working on, what I'm planning to work on over the next few weeks. And of course, the, uh, the giveaway announcement for last month, which is Frosthaven, and also details of the giveaway for the month coming. So let's make a start and go on with all of the games that I've played. So this covers from the 14th of April right up to yesterday, which is uh, the 8th of May. Right, okay, so in mostly chronological order, because on the 21st of April, then on the 23rd of April, and then on the 30th of April, I've played Aeon's End Legacy. Now, Aeon's End is a game that I've spoken about before on the video log. It is a cooperative deck building game. Uh, I think the game's absolutely fantastic. In fact, as I'm recording this video, in four hours time, I'm about to do a live stream of me doing a tutorial and playthrough video for the game. So you're probably gonna have seen that video before you see this one, because I've got to edit this one after I've done. But anyway, Aeon's End Legacy. Uh, we've started the campaign. Now, how have we managed to start the campaign in lockdown? We're using Tabletop Simulator. Somebody has created a mod for the game. It is highly likely unofficial, um, but I do have the physical game of Aeon's End, so it's kind of just the same as friends coming around and playing it, except we're having to use online tools. Um, yeah, Aeon's End, fantastic game. The legacy version is absolutely brilliant, and if you're just getting into Aeon's End, I would recommend starting with the legacy version, because what it does don't know who that was. What it does is it actually strips out a lot of the rules. Um, it, rather than a legacy version building on existing rules and going forward, it actually goes backwards. So at the start of Aeon's End Legacy, you actually start off uh, very weak breach mages and basically by the end of the whole legacy campaign, you will be then ready for the base game. And I say ready, in other words, your characters will have developed to a point um, where they can take part in the base game. So if you're looking to get into Aeon's End, I would highly recommend the legacy aspect. The story is good, the narrative's good. Obviously the gameplay is great because I, I enjoyed the game. I'm playing it with Rick uh, and Victoria. And uh, yeah, we're playing that. We actually tried playing a game last night, but there was problems with, uh, with the internet. So that didn't quite work out. Anyway, that's Aeon's End Legacy. We've currently done three chapters. I can't remember how many there is. I think there might be eight or nine or something. Uh, anyway, loving the game, gonna carry on that over the next few weeks. On the, uh, also on the 21st of April, I did uh, some solo playthroughs of Under Falling Skies. Now, this is CGE's, new, one of CGE's new games for this year. They've got two, two games coming out this year. One of them is Under Falling Skies, which is a solo game. Um, and this was actually decided on probably about nine months ago now. I know that this game was in development last year and they've decided to publish it this year. That was always gonna happen. But of course, with all of the lockdown stuff that's going on at the moment, what CG have done is they've made the development files for the game, the prototype of it, uh, available for print and play. So if you're interested in that, the video's on the channel, Under Falling Skies, it's basically aliens have invaded and you've got to try and, um, yeah, fight them off, develop a super weapon to get rid of them. It's, it's rolling dice, but then, clever placement of what, you know, it's not dice for resolution, you roll the dice first, and then it's like a puzzle game. And although it's advertised as a solo game, I personally feel it works better playing with two people together, trying to work out how they're gonna do it. Um, anyway, that's Under Falling Skies, video's on the channel now. I actually played it a few times that day to practice before doing the live stream. On the 22nd, so this is uh, 22nd of April now, I did Nemo's War. Now, Nemo's War is a game which I am due to do a review of, and it should be this month. I can't promise that. Um, it might end up getting bumped to next month, but I am going to be doing a review of Nemo's War at some point. Now, when I got into Nemo's War, 
Everybody's been talking about it as being a fantastic solo game, and it's a solo only game, okay? It can only be played solo. At least that's what everybody was telling me, and that's what everything I'd read about it was. And then it turns out there's multiplayer rules in the game. Now, <laughs> a few people have said, don't bother with the multiplayer rules. They don't work, they're rubbish. And I was like, well, if I'm gonna be doing a review of the game, I need to actually see for myself. So it's on the channel right now on April the 22nd. There is a video where I did a multiplayer playthrough uh, with Tom Heath from Slicker Drips and Tom DiPiazza, who's, uh, who I met through the Nemo's War Facebook group. Uh, and we did a multiplayer playthrough of it. Now, short answer is, I thought it worked absolutely fine. And the reason for that is, if I refer back to the comment that I just made about Under Falling Skies, I have no problem with playing what is a solo game with more than one player making those decisions. It was a bit more than that. And I know a lot of people don't like it, but I felt it, it worked okay. And it was a good experience uh, playing that game. Now it is quite a long game. And because I was running the stream, I was actively involved at all times. The other two players, possibly not as much. But yeah, Nemo's War multiplayer playthrough is on the channel now. On the 23rd, and I am logging this as a game played on BGG, I've got Spirit Island. And that is because the app is now available. It's in early access, it is available, it's on Steam now. Um, and although it's early access, it's all there. The game's there, it all works. There's, I, I haven't encountered any bugs. I'm sure there are some because they've released a couple of updates. But Spirit Island app, Greater Than Games got me a, a code for it. And I said, look, I'm gonna give this a go. And I did a video where I went through, basically playing through the tutorial as it were. And since then, I've played it a couple, of other, other, a couple of other times. So there's videos of that on the channel. If you're interested in Spirit Island or if you're interested in the Spirit Island app, that is on the channel now. I got together with Kenny uh, from Games Overboard and we played a two-player game of it. Again, similar way that I'm playing Gloomhaven Digital, which I'll come on to later on. The app wasn't able to connect to us both multiplayer. So what I did is I just shared my screen with him on Skype. He could see what I was doing and we talked everything through. And it was great. I Personally, I felt I've just played a two-player game of Spirit Island. And it's, as you'll know from probably if you've watched my previous vlogs, Spirit Island, I think, is a fantastic game. It's my number one cooperative game. I think it's amazing and I don't get to play it enough. And thankfully, with the app, I'm going to get to play it a whole host more. So, yeah, the app is very good. If you're interested in that, check out the video. Go and get the app. Then on the 24th of April, Friday the 24th, I did something quite different. I played Too Many Bones Undertow with a friend of mine, David, but he taught me how to play. So this wasn't using any kind of tabletop simulator. This is me with the physical game. Uh, and yeah, David, but basically we did an unboxing and David taught me how to play as if I knew nothing about the game. Now, I have tried to play it before three times over the last year and a half. The rule book for Too Many Bones is pretty awful. Um, and there's a lot of hidden information on a character sheet or in the bottom right hand corner of a reference sheet and it's all yeah it's really not great the game is good but the rule book lets it down and having somebody who knows how to play the game teach me how to play that that worked really well so finally i have played a full game of too many bones using the undertow don't know what bird that was um standalone expansion really enjoyed it again i'll say this many many times i want to play it more i want to play it again um hopefully more too many bones coming to the channel over the next few months maybe because i i do want to play it again now that i actually know how to play the game right so that's too many bones on the 27th so this is uh what was that friday saturday was the 25th so monday monday the 27th i did a live tutorial and playthrough of kalawala a tale of sampo and this is a game which is actually, uh, it's on Kickstarter. Uh, it's on Kickstarter right now at the time of me filming this video. Unfortunately, it's not doing too well. I don't think it's gonna fund. It's only got a few days left, but the game is interesting. Um, it's basically, it's a hidden movement game, but it's hidden movement for both sides. Okay, so the game has this very large metal screen that goes between the two players or the two sides, and you're both tracking hidden movement on it. It's all based on, um, folklore and I say real stuff but it's real folklore how much of that is actually real we don't know uh, set in Finland and the surrounding area as it was at the time um, yeah the videos on the channel I did it with Mark Street from Dice Tower um, I like Mark I like watching Mark's videos and we've spoken a few times and when I heard that he was getting a copy of the game as well I was like well let, let, let's organize you know a, a playthrough of this uh, doing a playthrough of a hidden movement game over the internet well check it out it worked fine 
Um, and yeah, the game isn't that complicated and it, it took about 45 minutes. Then what I did I do on the day after? So this is now Tuesday, 28th of April, um, as voted on by my Patreon supporters. Uh, they voted on me doing solo playthrough of Nussfjord this month. Now, Nussfjord is a game which I've done a review of in the past. It's an Uwe Rosenberg game published by Mayfair Games and Lookout Games. I really enjoy Nussfjord, as I mentioned in my review. Um, and it comes with three different decks. It comes with the Haddock deck, the, Her the, the Herring, Herring, Haddock and Cod, is it? Yeah, I don't have the Place deck, which is a fourth deck. But basically, unlike a lot of other games where you just mix all of the cards together, in Nussfjord, you only use one of the types of fish. So I've got enough for three different games. So I thought, well, I'll do three videos. So yeah, that's what I did. Instead of just doing one playthrough, I actually did on a Tuesday morning, I did three playthroughs, one after the other. It's all in one video on the channel. So if you want to see me doing that, I played the normal game for the first game. Then I played the, the advanced game that was harder. And then I played the advanced game with my house rule because I do play the game with a house rule. Um, I didn't want to do that for all of the games in the video, but I did use it for my last game. So yeah, Nussfjord, if you want to see me playing through it solo, it's a great solo game. It plays really quickly, like 20 minutes, 25 minutes. Um, next up, on the 28th of April, and again yesterday, uh, me and Vicky played Tainted Grail. Now, Tainted Grail is a game which I really enjoy once we have applied some of the um, recommended or suggested house rules fixes. They're not house rules because they're official variants. We're playing it on story mode. Um, now the thing is, um, Awakened Realms, are, 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 they're a client of mine. I was commissioned to do some work on the video. So it, it, it's difficult for me to be able to give you my full, you know, honest opinion about the game because they are a client. But the theme of the game, the setting, the narrative driven aspect of the game, I think he's incredible and we're really enjoying, well I'm really enjoying, I think Vicky is too, um, the stories. Basically it's uh, alternative Arthurian legends but there's magic, there's strange creatures, uh, the world is dying from this weirdness and you're having to relight these men here. It's really cool, it's really dark and it's really cool and there's something about the narrative and the setting that's really gripped me. I think the story's good, um, the, the, the problems with the game uh, which a lot of people have said is that there is a lot of grinding, there is a lot of repeating going here to get food, going here to heal up and everything else. The game is very realistic in terms of, I say very realistic in a world with magic monsters. What I mean is, in most fantasy role-playing games, you go into a scenario and at the end of the scenario, the scenario is over and you heal up to full, okay? In Tainted Grail, you have a health bar and you start off with like seven or eight health and you fight monsters and you'll take damage you heal one per day and only if you eat. So it, 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 it's realistic, right? You don't go into a fight with a big monster and then suddenly the next day you're on full hit points. No, you, you take time to heal. So that's great in that it's very thematic in the way that it works. However, when you apply that to a game setting, especially if you're using the base game rules where your energy is not allowed to go above your health, if your health goes down to three, you've only got three energy. And if you drop down below two, you're actually exhausted. And it's like, oh, okay, so you end up in this bit of a spiral where your characters get wounded. You then don't have enough energy to really do anything. If you're short on food, suddenly where are you gonna get food from? You've gotta go over there. You can't get there because you don't have enough energy. Um, anyway, that's the downside of the game. By applying the story mode fixes, which are all, as I say, they're all official variants, it makes the game just as enjoyable, well, in fact, more enjoyable, but I don't feel I'm losing anything in the game apart from cutting out a whole lot of grinding, okay? So things last longer, men here's are easier to relight, and, you know, e everything is just a bit extra. Um, and you, you always have your energy no matter how wounded you are. And suddenly we're able to enjoy the game, play the game, enjoy the narrative, choose the options, the story and everything else, uh, the, the grind is still there a little bit, you know, we need to get food, but a huge chunk of it has been removed. We have just finished chapter four yesterday and I am so eager to play more. I really want to play more. And not only do I want to play more, I want to play it again because it's a branching storyline. What we've discovered so far, and we're only on chapter four, is that there are two, three, four different ways this could have gone. And everywhere we go, there's multiple choices of what to do and what you can do. So the game, you can play the whole campaign again and choose, you know, a different route down it. So yeah, I'm looking forward to playing more of that. 
uh, if I wasn't having to work a lot this weekend, I'd be persuaded to play it again. Of course, I'd have to persuade Vicky, but that's another story. Right, next up. The 28th and the 29th, I played Mini Express. Now, the reason I played it on the 28th and the 29th is on the 29th, I did a live tutorial and playthrough video which was sponsored by Mo Ideas. Uh, so on the 28th, I got together with some friends and we, we basically played it uh, with me learning how to play. So Tom and Paul on the 28th, thank you very much, Tom, for teaching me how to play the game. We played through it. And then on the 29th, I did a live playthrough of it, uh, which was fully international. The wind's just picked up. So apologies if there's, if there's sound problems. Oh yeah. Um, it is very nice out here today. Um, so yeah, we had, we had Frank from Mo Ideas in Taiwan. We had Stella in Australia. Uh, and we had uh, Chris Whitpan and James Nathan in America. Five of us played Mini Express. Uh, and yeah, very, very international. And it was really good. Um, we didn't use any, again, we didn't use Tabletopia. Uh, we just played it with real components, with them telling me where to move. And I did all the physical stuff. Mini Express is on Kickstarter right now. It's doing really well, but if you're interested in it, uh, it's by Mark Gerritz, who also designed Mini Rails. It packs a lot of punch for a short game. It's like 45 minutes. Um, and yeah, that's on the channel now. And I've actually played Mini Express a couple of times since um, because it's been quite popular with my Patreon supporters. So we've basically started a little channel within the Slack group where lots of people are playing lots of games of Mini Express. I think there's one going on right now as I'm recording this. So that's Mini Express. Um, more on that later, because there's more content coming. On the 29th of April and the 1st of May, I did the Phantom, the card game. Now, the reason I did it on the 29th is I was learning how to play with the designer. So I was speaking to the designer on Skype. I learned how to play the game and I played through it myself. And then on the 1st of May, I did a live tutorial and playthrough of the Phantom. It's another game uh, which is on Kickstarter right now. First time designer based on the Phantom, which is a, a comic book hero, you know, one of the first ones. Um, and I'm really happy to say that the Kickstarter is doing really well. It's reached 200% of its funding. Uh, and Michael's quite, you know, he's, he's happy with that because as I say, this is his first design. He's a massive fan of the Phantom. He's from Sweden. The Phantom is big in Sweden. Uh, and he's put a lot of work into this game over three years. And it's really nice to see that, you know, people are jumping on board with that. So yeah, the Phantom, cooperative card game, either solo or two player. If you're interested, go and check out the video. And the Kickstarter is currently alive as we're speaking. Right. Uh, oh, let's go back in time. On the 30th of April, I did the solo play of On Mars. Now, my Patreon supporters voted that I would do a solo playthrough of On Mars. I think they voted on this back in January. Uh, and I knew that I would do it at some point, but I've just been waiting for the right moment to do it. Um, and I was a little nervous about it because although I know the rules of On Mars, I'd heard that the solo rules were an extra added layer of complexity. Uh, and I knew it was going to take a long time and I just kept putting it off. Um, anyway, then I came up with an idea. Rather than playing it solo, I will get together with another content creator who also likes Vital Lacerda games, who's already played this game solo, and that's what we did. So, uh, me and Andy Savage from One Man and His Meeple, Andy's got his own YouTube channel uh, where he does solo playthroughs, and basically we played it through together. Now, we did use Tabletopia for this, so we were playing the solo game but me and Andy were talking over Skype as we were doing it. And we, again, like I mentioned earlier on, we played it together. We were both talking about the ideas. What should we do? Should we do this? Should we do that? And it worked really well. Um, so yeah, I'm happy I've now played the solo game of On Mars. I don't think we won. Or did we win? I can't remember now. I think we did win. Yes, we did win. We, did, we certainly beat level one. Uh, we didn't get enough to do level two. But yeah, if you're interested in the solo game of On Mars, or seeing two people play the solo game together, then that video is on the channel. So this is Paul in the editing room on Sunday morning, realizing that I completely missed out one of the games that I played. I'd actually written this down on my Google Doc, but, but skipped over it when I was actually recording this yesterday. So this is Vindication. I did a live playthrough of this game uh, on the 1st of May in the evening, playing via Tabletop Simulator, because I don't own a physical copy of the game. Really good game, really enjoyed this game. I've played it twice now, I've played it first in January, 
uh, and then again at the start of this month. There's loads of expansion sets included with this game, and I think I'm definitely going to play this game again. Um, it is on Tabletop Simulator, and Orange Nebula, the publisher, gave me uh, permission to use it. I mean, it's, it's an unofficial mod on Tabletop Simulator, and I know some publishers uh, don't like their games being on there, but they were absolutely fine with it, um, happy to give the game some coverage. Definitely want to play it again and throw in some of the expansions next time. On Saturday the 2nd, which is a week ago today, um, I did a live stream of just one. So I got together with a whole bunch of other content creators from the Punchboard Media Network, which, is, which I'm a part of, um, and yeah, we did it. Now, if you haven't seen that, go and check it out, because Just One is an interactive game. You can play along at home and see how many you get. Uh, I won't spoil it by saying how many we got, but we did very well. Um, yeah, so you can play along. If you're interested in that, it's on the channel. Just go and search last week, 2nd of May, just one and every time we put up a word I say close your eyes and then we do all of the other stuff and then you open your eyes and you can try and guess along with what you think the word is really good fun do want to do another one it's just a matter of time okay moving forward to the fifth I just I, I'm gonna say something but I'll get to the end of this and then I'll say something because I've just realized something so on the 5th of May this is this week just gone I did you Thea torments of resurrection this was a five and a half hour stream. I was expecting it to be four hours. I was not expecting it to be five and a half, but this is a big epic fantasy game. It actually launched on Kickstarter on Tuesday. Uh, it's doing really well. New designers from the Czech Republic. Um, and yeah, they've been working on this game for a long time. I think an earlier version of it was released in the Czech language only. They've been developing it. They've been working on it. When you look at it visually, you don't think, I, I didn't think this was from a first, first time designers, but it is first time publishers. It's doing really well on Kickstarter. Um, I was extremely happy that they'd asked me to be involved in it because it has some similarities to Mage Knight visually. It doesn't play at all like Mage Knight, apart from it's quite complex, it's long uh, and it's epic and it's fantasy and it's going around killing monsters. But me and Rick started at seven o'clock and at half past midnight, we finished. Now, the game would not take five and a half hours if we were to play it again. It probably would be three and a half hours if we did it next time. Um, yeah, because we were, I mean, I was teaching the game as we went. So I'm just gonna check something. Yep, that's fine. I was teaching the game as we went. So that's obviously gonna be slower. Um, and we were using Tabletopia and the interface of Tabletopia does slow the game down a little bit. So if you think, oh no, it's a five and a half hour game, it's not, it's a three and a half hour game, three to three and a half. It's still a long game, but yeah, it's one of these epic fantasy games. So if you're interested in that, check it out. And I'm gonna be doing another video for it, which I'll talk about in a bit. Next up, Wednesday night, this is Wednesday just gone, I did Ride the Rails. Now Ride the Rails is a video that I already did for Capstone Games. Uh, they commissioned me to create a tutorial and playthrough video for the game. Liked it so much, had two extra maps with it. And I said to Capstone Games, tell you what, I'll do your videos for the other two games as well because I enjoyed it so much. So I have two extra, the, the base game is America. I have the Germany map, I have the France map. And on Wednesday, we did the Germany map and I'm already planning when I'm gonna do the France map and who I'm gonna do that with. So that's Ride the Rails, really good game. Uh, David Thompson was the special guest on that one who I'm a fan of because he did Undaunted, um, War Chest and some other stuff as well. Um, so yeah, it was great to have him on even though he did beat me. Um, then Mini Express again, then Tainted Grail again. Right, so the thing that I was gonna mention is, these are all the games that I've played. All of these, with the exception of maybe one, Aeon's End Legacy, I've live streamed. So this has actually been a list of all of the games that I've played, but also a list of all of the live streams that I've done recently. And that is because the current situation of lockdown is I've got a lot less, well, I'm not able to have people around to play games. So although I'm playing more games, I'm also live streaming a lot more games as well. So almost everything that I'm playing at the moment is being live streamed. And that's just, that's just how it is. Right, it's time to talk about the Patreon update. So last month, or well, yeah, in, la in the last video log, which was three weeks ago, I basically explained to everybody the changes that I was making to the channel. Uh, the fact that I've turned advertising on, all of the money's being given to charity, uh, and the fact that the Patreon had had a really good boost. In, in the month of uh, March, the Patreon had actually picked up. Now, this is 
presumably due to the amount of extra content that I'm making, but also word is starting to spread, other people are starting to hear about the videos and starting to see what I'm doing. You know, it's only taken five years, but thank you to everybody for bearing with me and to basically help you know, sharing the word about it. Uh, keep doing so, because um, it's great that new people are finding the channel. I, I still, I'm a member of a number of Facebook groups and the amount of people on there that go, yeah, Paul Grogan, I, I've never, I never, never heard of him. I'm not expecting everybody to know of me, but you know, that they don't know that I make tutorial videos. And it's like, wow, I've been doing it like six years now and I've been really working hard for six years at producing tutorial videos. Um, and there's, you know, there's a lot of people out there who still don't realize that I make tutorial videos. Um, I don't know, there's not much I can do. But anyway, um, I mentioned that March was a good month. April was even better. April was actually the best month that I've had regarding the Patreon support. So a huge thank you uh, to all of the new supporters that have joined in April. Um, we've, I've added you to the Slack channel, so the community's built up and it's, it, yeah, it, it's been quite humbling the amount of people that have started supporting me recently and the amount of people who I thought might have left because of the current situation and people in trouble, and a few people have and that's fine, but I was expecting more. Um, so yeah, a massive thank you. Now, Every month I go through all of the new supporters that I've had, and I'm gonna put this on screen now. So this is a list of everybody who started supporting me uh, in April, 2020. If you have started supporting me since the end of April, you'll get mentioned in the next video log. So we have uh, a number of new executive producers. Thank you very much to everybody here. And some people who've increased their pledge from a, uh, you know, a lower support level to executive producer. Uh, then we have three columns worth of producers. This is, this is mind-blowing for me. Massive, massive thank you to everybody who jumped on board. Normally this is one column long. So yeah, this is really appreciated at the moment. Uh, and then a group of people who've also, bought, uh, who've also started supporting um, at a lower level. So again, massive thank you to, to all of you as well. And if you like the content that I make, then I'm only able to do it with the support of my Patreon campaign. And right now, what, what I've done for the last, well, probably the last four months is I have been increasing the amount of content that I've been producing. With the way that the Patreon campaign has gone in the last couple of months, that now I feel a whole lot better about it because um, it's basically making, it's basically paying for me to spend more time producing Patreon stuff. Um, so yeah, thank you very much for that. Now, every month I do a giveaway and last month's giveaway was the biggest giveaway I've ever done and I'm probably never gonna give anything away bigger than this. We don't know, but we'll see. Uh, Cephalofair Games uh, kindly donated an entire massive all-in pledge level for Frosthaven worth $240. And somebody's going to win it. So let's go over to the computer and we will do the draw. So basically, here's all of the list of all of my executive producers first. If you're an executive producer, you get three entries into the system. Uh, and then the list of producers below that. And if you're a producer, you get one entry. And now we just do a random number. And the winner is Rich Hickey. Congratulations, Rich. Now I've contacted Rich uh, and I've let him know that he's won. Uh, so yeah, congratulations. Thank you for your support. Rich has been with me for a couple of years, I think, as a, as a, as a producer. So yeah, congratulations, Rich. And um, yeah, I'll be sending you an email and I'll be copying in Cephalofair Games and we'll work out how you're gonna get the game when you eventually get it. Uh, which will be July next year, I think, something like that. Now, this month's contest. So <laughs> I just mentioned the Frosthaven one is the biggest one I've ever done because it's valued at $240. Well, this one is actually bigger than most of the other ones that I've done. So this is actually, I think, the second biggest giveaway. Um, and I'm going to mention this in a little while, but one of the pieces of content that I've produced this month was a sneak preview playthrough video for something called The Detective Society. Now, this isn't, you know, it isn't a board game. It isn't on BGG. There isn't an entry for it on BGG. This is a game, uh, it's like a puzzle escape room style game that's been created by people who create escape rooms. Uh, and they wanted me to basically do a first look at the game, a playthrough of a demo scenario to give people an idea of, of what it would be like. I did that. Um, I love escape room, <clears throat> excuse me, I love escape room games. You, you know, regular followers of mine, are, I love puzzle games. Me and Vicky love puzzle games. So very happy that they asked me, <clears throat> excuse me, very happy that they asked me to get involved in this. 
Um, the video is on my channel now. I'm going to mention it in a while. But what the Detective Society is, is a six month uh, subscription to um, basically you will get in the post one box every month for six months which is filled with escape room style, detective style, TV detective style puzzles. Um, all six of them together make up one big story. Each one is, is completely standalone, but there is an ongoing story uh, across all six. It's on Kickstarter right now, but the whole six month package, I think is worth 140 pounds. And again, one of my supporters is going to win this. So if you are a producer or executive producer, you don't need to do anything. You automatically get entered at the end of the month. If you are not currently a producer level and you are interested in winning, then please consider supporting me on Patreon and you will basically get entered into the contest. I will do the draw in the next video log. Um, yeah, a massive thank you to the people behind the Detective Society. And if you want to know more about the game, check out the video. The Kickstarter is live now. Um, yeah, if you like puzzle style games or anything like that, you know, searching for clues, having to text somebody, go on the internet, look up somebody, um, stalk them on Twitter, which I, we had to do to find out some personal information, to unlock a, a code that got us access to a file, all of that sort of stuff. Really, really good stuff. That's the giveaway for this month. So again, I'll be doing the draw. Uh, basically, you need to be supporting me before the last day of this month to be entered into the contest. Right. So content that I've made. So I mentioned most of those videos that I've played through, there is content for all of those. The other things that I have done content for is Gloomhaven Digital. So I didn't record this in my list of plays, unlike I did with, have I forgotten Twilight Struggle? I forgot Twilight Struggle. Yeah, I thought I was gonna mention Twilight Struggle. I'll mention it in a minute. Um, Gloomhaven Digital, I am not recording the plays that I'm doing of Gloomhaven Digital on BGG. I am recording Spirit Island because the Spirit Island app is a replacement for the board game, whereas the Gloomhaven digital app is a separate thing. So I'm not logging my plays of it on BGG. But I've been playing a lot of Gloomhaven digital. We're playing twice a week. We did part 19 on Thursday and we're going to carry on next week. Um, I am planning to wrap it up at some point soonish because it's actually taking a lot of time to do these um, and we're about to fight the second boss. So my plan is that we're going to wrap up the series once we've fought the second boss and then uh, Flaming Fowl Studios, the people behind Gloomhaven Digital, have actually got a large update plan for the adventure mode. Once they release that, we're probably going to start again just to show off what the new adventure mode is because uh, it does sound exciting, the things that they're going to be including in it. Uh, and yeah, that's the Gloomhaven Digital. So Twilight Struggle, I'd forgotten to mention that in the list of games that I've played, but um, yeah, Play Deck, sent me a copy, uh, sent me a key for the Steam version of Twilight Struggle, which Twilight Struggle is one of those games that I played like 10, 11 years ago and didn't get on with for a couple of reasons. First of all, Derek, who was teaching me how to game, was really good at the game and just beat me constantly every time and I didn't feel like I stood any chance whatsoever. Now, at the time, I had a bit of a problem with that. Now I'm thinking, why did you have a problem with that? The game is an extremely skill-based game Derek was a far better player, knew the cards really well. There was no way I was ever going to win, so I shouldn't have even tried to. But it, it showed me that you, you need to know the cards of the game in order to do well, and I didn't know the cards of the game. But also, there's dice in it, and the dice can be very swingy and very random. Anyway, I got the app to try and get back into it again, and I have really got back into it. So I have done four videos on Twilight Struggle, which are on my channel. I fir the first one was a first look at the app, where literally... I loaded the app up for the first time and went live and played through it. Then I did three videos. I did, um, I did a, play a full playthrough, part one, part two, and part three. Part one was the early war, part two is the mid war, part three is the late war, with interactive help from the chat, because I did them live, helping me with what cards to choose and why I should choose them. The app conversion is brilliant. It's really, really good. It's very slick, it's very polished, it works really well. The interface is incredible. Uh, it's so much easier to play on the app than the board game because it tells you certain things. Oh, you can do this here, that there, all of the little icons. It's all there. Really, really good app. Very, very good conversion of the game. I'm currently playing a game of it right now against Chris Incow in America. And then when I've done with that, that's not being streamed. Uh, and then when I've done with that, I'm actually going to do another set, of, uh, another set of videos, part one, part two, part three, uh, playing against somebody else, a human opponent. Need to sort that out probably in a few weeks time. So Twilight Struggle, I've been, I've been doing that and 
That's all the content that I produced. Should have mentioned this earlier on. Um, I did a live Q&A with Gilly from Chip Theory Games. Um, I did a live Q&A with Mark Gerritz, uh, designer of Mini Express. Uh, and I also did my own live Q&A. So again, they're, they're on the channel if you're interested in, in hearing about them. Right, projects that I've been working on over the last few weeks. Clash of Cultures rulebook. Clash of Cultures is getting a new edition. It's the monumental edition. It's going to be published by WizKids Games. It's going to be a big box, everything in there. Uh, it's going to have all of the stuff from the expansion that was always really hard to get hold of. Um, and there's some tweaks as well. It isn't just a reprint. I have been working on the rulebook with uh, WizKids and the designer and some of my team, and it's looking fantastic. It really is. Now, I, I liked Clash of Cultures anyway, but the new version does look quite nice. Uh, Dead Reckoning, the rulebook for that. Um, in fact, yeah, the, the rulebook for that, has. I've been working in a Google Doc for months on it. That got finished. The layout has just been done, um, and we're about to start proofreading of the layout. So Dead Reckoning from AEG, that's coming later this year. Uh, they've advertised it as their most ambitious project yet, I think. I don't think that's true, because Edge of Darkness, I think, was the most ambitious. But yeah, Dead Reckoning, John D. Clare designer, card crafting, but works thematically. Your cards are basically your crew. And as you slide other transparent sleeves into them, or transparent cards into them, that's your crew getting experience and they get better. It works really well. So that's Dead Reckoning. Uh, my team is working on Kingdom Rush, all of the rule books for all of the expansions of Kingdom Rush. That's almost finished. I'm working on the rulebook for Astrolabe from designer Daniel Newman and Parallel Games. That's in progress at the moment. Uh, my team's working on Oathsworn still. Um, Import Export from uh, Jordan Draper. So there's a new version of Import Export coming. It was a, a big Kickstarter last year, I think, that was successful uh, and did a bit on that this morning. It's almost done. Okay, so the Import Export game, Jordan's asked me to get involved in the rulebook. Um, when, he got, when he asked me to get involved in the rulebook, I was expecting it to be a few hours work. We have completely and utterly taken the rulebook apart, ripped it to pieces and rewritten it from scratch. So if you thought the original rulebook for import export was good, then apologies, but I have torn it to pieces and started again from scratch. Jordan gave me permission. He said, blanket approval, Paul, if you need to completely trash it and start again, feel free to do so. And I read through it and I was like, yeah, I'm afraid, I'm afraid that's what I'm going to have to do. If you thought that the original rulebook for import-export wasn't good, then hopefully you'll enjoy the new version. But yeah, yeah, that's coming soon. Right, so that's what I've been working on in the past. Plans for the next few weeks. Well, this afternoon, in a few hours' time, I need to start advertising this, I'm doing Aeon's End. Uh, so yeah, th that video is actually going to go live before this vlog goes out. But Aeon's End, I'm doing a tutorial and playthrough of it this afternoon. Five o'clock UK time. Don't know why I'm saying that. You're going to see that before this. Um, on Monday, something that I'm super excited about, and this is I'm doing a, another live tutorial and playthrough video, three o'clock on Monday of Maharaja 2nd Edition. Now, I have the original version of Maharaja. It's Kramer and Kiesling. It's another great Kramer and Kiesling game. But despite me liking the original game, really liking it, it has a problem. And when Cranio Creations spoke to me about Maharaja and said, Paul, we'd like you to get involved in this project. Uh, we're doing a new edition of Maharaja. I had a conversation with Simone Luciani and I said, uh, oh, great. Are you going to fix the runaway leader problem? And he went, yep. I was like, all oh, right, OK. So basically, there was a runaway leader problem with the original game because there's no randomness in it whatsoever. So as soon as one player gets ahead, they can just stay ahead. And games were kind of decided, you know, a quarter of the way through or halfway through the game. The new version, we'll find out, but I'm due to play it on Monday morning with some friends, and then I'm doing a live stream uh, Monday afternoon with Simone Luciani himself. So that's happening on Monday. On Tuesday, I am doing another live playthrough uh, of Dale of Merchants from Snowdale Design with Sammy, the designer himself. We're getting together. We're going to be using Tabletop. Uh, are we using Tabletop Simulator or Tabletopia? I can't remember which we're using but Sammy's going to teach me how to play the game. It's on Kickstarter right now. Uh, I'd agreed to play the game with Sammy because I've heard Dale of Merchants is really good. Um, and Sammy said, well, look, Paul, if you want to jump online, we can play a game of it. And I said, and he'll teach me. And I said, well, that's fine. Are you okay if I stream it? And he said, yeah, absolutely fine. So this was all planned. And I said, I'll do it because the guy's nice. He does good games and I wanted to play the game. And then I realized, oh, wait a minute. You're actually going on Kickstarter with this. 
Now, normally that would be a chargeable service, but I thought, well, there's no way I'm gonna do this. I've reached out to him saying, I would like you to do this. So there you go. They're getting a bit of free, free marketing from that. So that's Tuesday, Daily of Merchants. Next week, I am starting to plan uh, a how to play video. Now I've not done one of these for a while and it, it's weird because it's kind of how I started in the industry creating these how to play videos and I still do them. I just don't do as many as I used to do because I do other stuff now. But I still do the how to play videos and next week I'm starting work on how to play video for Undaunted North Africa. This is the second game in the Undaunted series. I mentioned it earlier on. It's co-designed by um, you know Trevor Benjamin and David Thompson. Uh, I'm a fan of the first game. I've had a quick look through this one it's sufficiently different enough to not just be the same game, but set in the desert. It's got vehicles, it's got all sorts of different things. I'm starting work on it next week. That video probably won't be ready until maybe the end of the month, but I'm starting work on it next week. Uh, I also have uh, a rule book that I'm working on called Project L, uh, and this is from Cubator. This is the people uh, who have done the Space Race game and Space Race the board game and Space Race the card game. Uh, they enjoyed the work that I, well, enjoy might be the wrong word. They appreciated the work I did on the rule book for Space Race, the board game. So they have asked me to work on their, their other new game, which is called Project L. That's due to start next week. Um, at the end of May, I'm doing a how to play video for Solar Storm. Solar Storm, UK designers, um, was a successful Kickstarter. Um, they've asked me to do a how to play video on it. So I've heard the game's good. And in fact, they actually came to uh, an event which I hosted last year where they ran demos of it and I heard from people who played it that it was good. So I'm keen on that one. A cooperative game where I believe you're on a space station and there's things going wrong and you've got to try and survive. Reviews should be coming. I don't know when, but I currently owe you three reviews. I owe you a review of Lancaster, Trakirian and Nemo's War. I am planning them. I am planning a, I am planning a two player game of Lancaster next week with Graham. Uh, Graham Charlton, because Graham liked the game, didn't realise there was a two-player variant, and as I mentioned way back at the start, if I'm going to do, re do a review of the game and there's a two-player version, I need to review, I need to play the two-player version so that I can give an opinion on it. Um, Trickerian, I still want to play again before I do a review of it, even though I've played it a few times now, there's still aspects of that game, there's still expansions that I haven't used, and I kind of think, oh... I really should try and play again with these expansions, again, in order to be able to provide a full review for you. And Nemo's War, I probably want to play it just once more. I'm, I'm ready to do a review on that one, I think, after one more play. So I'm probably, I might do, I might do that one first, actually. I think, um, yeah, I think Trickerian might get bumped a little bit, maybe to next month, and I'll probably do Lancaster and Nemo's War. I'm hoping to get those done by the end of the month. I've actually got time booked out at the end of the month to do those. We'll see how the work goes because I have two other rule books that are going to be working on over the next few weeks, and that is Gates of Mara from WizKids Games, um, which I did some work on a month or so ago, and they've now finished the rule book. Daniel Solis is the graphic designer. He's finished the rule book. It's been sent to me this weekend, and we need to start the final editing of that. And Scrumpy. Um, Scrumpy is a game designed by a good friend of mine, uh, the guy, one, one of the people behind Handicon, Paul Fronstoff Harris. Uh, who, as of yesterday, is now a father. So congratulations, Paul. Um, yeah, if you know Paul, uh, yeah, his, his wife's been pregnant for the last, you know, nine months, uh, and he's now a father. I think it was maybe Thursday. Maybe it was Thursday, maybe it was yesterday. Anyway, whilst doing all of that being a father stuff, he's also got a game. Um, Scrumpy's a game he's been working on for a while. Did the rule book for it months ago, but it's now been, it's now been laid out in a PDF, and we're now starting the final the final proofing of that. So they're all the things that I'm working on over the next few weeks. It is going to be busy. Um, what it does mean, for those of you who have been used to a lot of live content from me, I'm afraid it's going to drop down a little bit over the next couple of weeks because I'm still behind on the rulebook work that I should have done and I have these how to play videos to do. But I'm still going to be trying to do as much live content as I can. As I mentioned, next week is going to be uh, Maharaja, Dale of Merchants, Mini Express, hopefully a two-player Lancaster and two Gloomhaven Digitals. That's, that's all coming next week. Uh, and there will be more stuff the week afterwards. Right, personal stuff. Things that I've been doing in my pers personal time. We've been watching a lot of TV. So me and Vicky watched the first two series of Arrow a while back. I don't know exactly how long ago it was. It might have even been two years ago, maybe three years ago. 
But Series 3 of Arrow has been on our list of things to watch for a long time. And eventually, uh, we, we got round to it. So about a week ago, maybe a week and a half ago, we went, we'd, we'd finished watching what we were watching. And we said, right, what we're going to start next? Arrow Series 3. Okay, so we started watching Arrow Series 3. Um, really enjoy the Arrow TV series. Lots of people have told me it goes really downhill after like Series 2 or 3. But we'll get to there when we get to there. And we started watching it. And we got to Episode 8. And then it said previously on The Flash, and we're like, oh, wait, wait a minute, because it's all part of the Arrowverse and there's a lot of crossovers. So I was like, whoa, stop, 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 stop. We've got The Flash, we haven't watched it yet, but let's go on a website and found the order in which we need to watch them in. So suddenly we stopped watching Arrow and we started watching Flash. And then last night we got up to the point where where it's like episode eight of each series and we're now back on Arrow again, but basically we're going to alternate. So we're going to watch them in chronological order according to this website so that it all sort of fits in and makes sense. So we're watching that, enjoying that, really enjoying those. Both really good programs at the moment, really enjoying them. We've also watched a lot of Red Dwarf, trying to catch up on the few series that we missed. Um, I think we've got one series to go and then the film, which was on recently. And we're still playing quite a lot of puzzle games. I mentioned the puzzle games on the app last time. We've also done, been playing something called um, Insiders. Now, Insiders is a home escape room style game which has been put uh, on by the people who run the deadlocked escape rooms. I'm going to put something up on screen now about it because you can actually go on and you can get this from them. Uh, yeah, so it's basically all to do with the Wexel Corp Corporation. It's called Insiders uh, and it's something that the people who organise these escape rooms, they've done at the moment because nobody can go to their escape room. And it's been really good, really, really good. We're on part two of three. Uh, and we're, we're planning on playing a bit more of it tomorrow, I think. Um, but yeah, if you like escape room games and you like puzzle games, then go and check that out. Um, we're really enjoying it. And there we go. That is everything. I really hope this video worked because, you know, if the lighting didn't work or the audio didn't work, I, I don't really want to have to do it all again. Um, but yeah, so uh, I probably should have said this at the start, but a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters, not just all of the new ones this month, but everybody who has been supporting me for, you know, the last few months, six months. Some people who are watching this have actually been supporting me from day one. Uh, and the Patreon's been going two and a half years now, um, which is scary to think, because, you know, before doing the Patreon, all I did was the how to play videos and the rule books, and suddenly, yeah, my, my life is very different now. I'm much happier with what I'm doing now, creating these vlogs, doing the Q and A's, doing the live playthroughs, doing all of the fun stuff. Um, yeah, it means I'm not producing a lot, some of the older content that I used to make, but that, yeah, I was kind of, I don't know what words to use to describe it. Um, it, it wasn't working out. The videos, the videos were still there. I think the videos were still good. I think the quality was getting better, but the, the views were going down and it, it just wasn't working out. I'm still doing those videos, but yeah, I'm happy that the Patreon has given me the flexibility uh, to do what I'm able to do at the moment and a lot of a lot of content that is is not not commissioned It's all funded through the patron campaign. So yeah, huge. Thank you to everybody I'm gonna I'm gonna disappear off because I've got the video to prepare for this afternoon And I've got to edit this vlog and that's everything. So yeah, good luck if you are a patron supporter uh, for winning a copy of the detective society and Take care everybody and I'll see you next time Proudly sponsored by Game Toppers, upgrading your gaming experience. Visit GameToppersLLC.com.